Hello everyone, welcome back to the Pro Football Storing channel. I am your host, Flynn Given. I'm starting off with the division round. Obviously, this is what we're going to be reviewing in this video and maybe talking about some of the news that's going on this week. But uh, what a great round of games. You know, every single game was compelling. They all were tight. Um, you know, there wasn't any big underdog, but all the underdog, most of the underdogs won this week. And, uh, you know, all of them could have went to overtime. Only one ultimately did. And the rest were ended on uh, game-winning kicks. So let's start off talking about the Bengals and Titans game. So this game, you could say, uh, there's a lot to it. Start from, you know, first quarter. You know, Bengals kind of controlled it. The first play, Ryan Tannehill throws an interception. It wasn't a great inter... It's one of those that... Was Pretty much on the quarterback, can't blame anyone else. You could say a good play on Jesse Bates, but but either way, it was not a great decision staring down the throw, it looked like. And uh, Bates, you know, undercutting and picking it off. You know, Bengals get two field goals in the first quarter. Um, you know, and they had multiple chances to make it a bigger lead. Titans defense would, uh, would hold and usually get sacks on those drives. Ultimately, they had nine sacks in the game, a postseason record. But ultimately, in the second quarter, you know, Titans finally drove it. Derek Henry got it in. I will say, Henry was definitely not 100%. They fed him like he was uh, completely healthy. But uh, it probably cost him, honestly, the way they played this game with the turnovers and then with Henry not being 100%. Foreman would probably have been the better option, at least to split the carries if at the worst. But either way, they that, that that's not what happened. So when they went to the half, you know, it was six to nine, and really the Titans went for two because they got a penalty, and when they and they didn't get it. So instead of being at seven nine or something like that, they were down six to nine, which ultimately would would come to play later in the game. Bengals' first drive was really good. They finally had some running game going. Mixon 16-yard run for a touchdown. The ultimate would be followed up eventually by the Titans by uh, getting a field goal, making it you know, 9-16, to 16, making it a one-possession game. I will say in the middle of this, it was a big run by Devontae, you know, Devontae Foreman and uh, – after that big run, they got down to nine, and Mike Helm made a great play an interception. On this, so the second interception by Tano. This one's probably the least to blame on Tano, but it was another thing. The Bengals kind of knew it was coming. They they were basically ready for the run, so they did a, you know, you could say it was RPO. They just their option was to throw a bubble screen. Not only did the corner, both the blitzing corner and the corner covering knew it was coming, basically. And unless Tannehill pump fakes it, I don't know if he probably completes it, but it's going to be a tackle for the loss, most likely. And uh, just, you know, they were ready for it. Mike Hill makes the play, tips it up to himself, interception, returns it to like the 40. Big play in the game. Ultimately, you know, I think the Bengals get stopped, which allows the Titans, you know, make it 9-16. Nine, nine Eventually, uh, end of the third quarter, on a short drive, you know, big play by, uh, uh, you know, A.J. Brown, 30-30 yard touchdown. So that made it tied 16-16. And then at the end of the game, Really, 20 seconds left. Tannehill throws a contested ball in the coverage to, uh, I think it was, you know, Westbrook Inghine. I think that's how you say it. And, you know, out of all players you're going to go to, you're going to him. I, I don't understand. I understand, you know, if he's a wide open, you throw to him. But throwing a contested pass to, I don't know if you would be calling him your third receiver. He's really... I mean, you really have two great receivers and then a couple of tight ends that you throw to and your running backs. So Westbrook's not not the guy you think you would throw in that situation. 
Either way, kind of risky pass. Tanner shouldn't be throwing that. And it's tipped up interception. Gives him enough time to get one play, get to field goal range. And uh, the Bengals kick it, and they win the game. So, you know, going the next round, I'll obviously be talking about the next few games, but Bengals are headed to Kansas City, a team they defeated already. But that was in Cincinnati. So I think the Chiefs are a little bit different team. It wasn't that long ago, though. But I think the Chiefs offense is playing a little bit better. Again, it's going to be a great matchup. Again, the offensive line, the Bengals. I was talking about how it was going to be concerning. And it was concerning. Uh, they just got away with with the victory, basically, and got out of there. Even with getting letting up nine sacks. Uh been a problem all year for the Bengals. Well, well, more than just this year. It's better this year, but still an issue. Probably the biggest hole of any team in the playoffs right now is the Bengals' offensive line. Moving on, though, we talked about that game enough, I think. Another close game. Packers 49ers. I'd say the first quarter. Packers first drive touchdown. Kind of dominated the first quarter. Uh, you know, four nine for the most part until like mid second quarter had negative yards on the game, and uh, the second drive for the Packers was going down the field as well. And then it was a fumble by Mercedes Lewis, his only catch of the game. You know, for what he's like thirty seven or something. That's I don't think that's his last play, but uh, that'd be an unfortunate way to you know to lose his game and. Your only play is a, a fumble, which kept the four niners in the game and really changed momentum. Later, uh, you know, four niners still didn't do much. Uh say before the second half. Packers were on a third down with about twenty so seconds. Uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers rolls out, he throws the Aaron Jones. This play's talked about a lot because people think Aaron Jones could just ran it. Straight was going to outrun uh, Tart to the end zone. He decided to try to cut back in, allowing him to get tackled. And ultimately, the other thing is he didn't get out of bounds, so that also used the timeout. Rodgers gets sacked. Uh, they decide to kick the field goal then, and it's blocked. Game's only 7 nothing going to half. Packers pretty much dominate the first half. And uh, well, I shouldn't say dominate, but... Played way better in the second half. But uh, they're a team that doesn't make mistakes, and they made mistakes. I know they usually made special team mistakes and they got away with it or overcame them. But the special mistake, team's mistake, the fumble, uh, just ultimately resulted in 7 0 in the half. Third quarter comes about. You know, the 49ers are having short fields of the entire game because the f- kickoffs and Packers coverage team not doing too well. You know, on a, another short field, you would say, the uh, 49ers go down the field, get a field goal. Then, you know, later, going into the fourth quarter, Packers have another drive. You're thinking if they can get 14, this could put this game away. Ultimately, only get a field goal, mostly because I would say a false start really hindered them, making it like a long second and 10 and the third and Eight or whatever. Uh, so yeah, it then became ten to three. You know, Rodgers and uh, Jimmy Garoppolo got pressured a lot in this game. Uh, I would say another thing I didn't mention: Garoppolo threw a, a bad interception before half, which led to the Packers getting the Aaron Jones pass. But ultimately, neither team scored on those drives. Later in the game. Five minutes left. Packers are punting in their own end zone. It gets blocked. 49ers return for a touchdown. It is now 10 10. 49ers with no offensive touchdown, no defensive touchdown, are now tied in the game. Packers get the ball. You know, they don't move the ball. I know Rodgers was upset with himself probably because he thought he could hit. He tried to throw to Adams and he had actually Lazard underneath open. Um, ultimately, you know, more pressure. That was actually a clean pocket on that play. 
they blitzed him, and the, the Packers actually blocked it pretty well. So, you know, throws a deep pass to Adams, incomplete. They punt it. You know, four Niners drive down the field, third and seven. They get they run it with Debo Samuel. He picks up the first, and they kick a game-winning kick, sending the Packers home. Well, I should say, maybe not sending them home. They're already home, but, you know, ending their season. Both number one seeds lose. For the Packers, you know, a lot of questions going in the offseason about a lot of players on their team. There's no clue. There's going to be, obviously, there's a lot of weeks still going to have to come into play and a lot of days to decide who they're keeping, who they're not, who, which guys they can re sign or, or restructure to keep the, the group together, or do they just move on from the, you know, the conferences, which with Lamont LaFour, obviously he doesn't think that's happening. Hopefully, I think Gudekitz is the guy going to make that call. But uh, it's going to be him. It's going to be LaFleur. It's going to be uh, Mark Murphy. And maybe Aaron Rodgers all sitting down one day, maybe a month or two from now, and deciding what is the best thing for all of them, for all parties. Again, four ers win. Uh, didn't, you know, offensively, didn't do much. You know, their special teams outplayed the Packers special teams which was a problem for the Packers all year long. And uh, that's why the 49ers are advancing. Going to the conference game against the Rams, going to L.A., which we'll talk about. Probably the most dominating performance this week was the Rams. Ultimately, you look at the score and it's like, it doesn't look like that, but the Rams were up huge. You know, I'll just sum it up really quick. They score almost every drive. Bucks can't really get much going. Right before half, can't make their fumbles. It makes it only 20 to 3. He fumbles at the one yard line. So it's 20 to 3 at half because of that. Either way, the Rams eventually get a quarterback sneak to go up 27 3 mid third quarter. And then uh, Bucks drive to get a field goal. It's only six to twenty-seven at this point, and uh, you know the Rams uh, turn it over. I think this is probably the Cooper Cup fumble. Either way, their second fumble happens, even though Brady got sacked fumble by Von Miller earlier. So they have that fumble that leads to some points for the Bucks. They also have. A snap that goes uh, to the side of Matthew Stafford. You know, I think that's the drive that later leads to Tom Brady in sacked and fumbled. But so that's the third fumble by the Rams. And then later in the game, after a giant play by the Bucks with Mike Evans on Ramsey 55 yard touchdown, the Cam Akers fumbles for the second time, four fumbles. Allows the Bucks and they're running in on a nine yard touchdown run on fourth down with uh, 42 seconds left. So the Rams fumbling four times. They have a field goal wind up being short in the game as well. So just a lot of mistakes by the Rams. They'll keep the Bucks in the game. And I think they're the first team because they ultimately would get a giant play by Cooper Cup on a blitz, get him in field goal range, and Matt Gay kicks the game-winning field goal. This is a uh, one of those games. I think it's the first time in almost thirty years, if not more than that, the team fumbled four times and won. And we have questions: Does Brady come back? My feeling was always that he was going to come back, and maybe next year would be his last season. But obviously a lot of that's coming out now. I'm still leaning towards he's probably coming back, but never know. This could have been his last game. Either way, Bucks season's over. I think another thing maybe people aren't talking about that could affect that is is Byron Leftwich staying? Is Todd Bowles staying? You know, all those questions. 
I guess he was also staying receiver. You know, Godwin's a free agent. All that kind of stuff. But I think he'll probably make his decision before free agency. We'll see, though. So Rams is hosting the San Francisco 49ers in this game. People are calling this the greatest game ever. It's probably the greatest postseason game maybe ever. Like I was saying in the middle of the game, this game's really good. It was amazing throughout. I think each team punted here once. Each quarterback, you know, had a total of four touchdowns. I was running one in early in the game. Either way, he went back and forth. Especially, let's just talk about later in the game, honestly. So, Chiefs get a field goal, making it 26 to 21. I think mean, they stopped the Bills. The Bills didn't stop the Chiefs. And uh, Bills go down the field. Gabe Davis, Gabriel Davis, catches. His third touchdown of the game with 154. The Bills then go for two. Amazing play Diggs has. Josh Allen played fantastic the whole game. This was one of those fantastic plays. Rolling out, extending the play, hitting Diggs in the back of the end zone, making it 29 26. And then, in like 50 seconds later, uh, Hill catches a slant basically, or a jerk ride. I don't really remember, but. Goes in the middle of the field, catches it, goes all the way, splits the defense. 64-yard touchdown, 102 left on the clock. They're now the Chiefs are up by four. The Bills drive down the field. They score a touchdown with Gabe Davis, fourth of the day. 36-33, 13 seconds left. You're thinking, oh, the Bills are going to win this game. But no, they, they give the Chiefs two chances. The Chiefs move down the field, kick a field goal, and they go to overtime. Was it 24, 25 points in the last 154 of the game? It was amazing. Go to overtime. Chiefs get ball. They go down the field. Kelsey touchdown. That's why the Chiefs are advancing and why the Bills aren't. A lot of people are going to talk about it and they should change overtime. I don't really disagree. I've never. I really wanted the rules to change back when they changed them after that Minnesota Saints game. But uh, again, what is the right way to do it? I'm not totally sure. Of you don't really want college rules, but then if you do the each, even if they score a touchdown, the other team gets the ball. What that might lead to is both teams scoring touchdowns, and the other team just going for two at the end. I don't know which is the right call, but. Either way, that's uh, another topic for another day. And uh, Chiefs score 42 to advance to the championship game, hosting it for the fourth straight year against the Cincinnati Bengals, a team they've lost to earlier in the year, like I told you earlier. And the thing is, the 49ers, they are 2-0 and against the Rams this year and 2-0 and the prior two years against them. So six straight for San Francisco against L.A. They had a close game with the overtime last week of the season. But uh, these are great games coming up. You know, it's unfortunate, you know, Bills and other teams that played well, seasons are over. You know, hope they can uh, rebound and come back. Either way, let's go to the news. Le'Veon Bell. Clears waiver. That's again released by the Bucks. I don't know. Really, this could be his last chance, obviously. And uh, I don't see the the four teams in the playoffs picking him up. So, if we hear anything, it's probably next year about for Le'Veon. Some injury news. We'll see if they play. They probably will. Coaching news. We still don't have a hire. I would assume that would change this week. More general manager searching. More requests for interviews. These reserve contracts are interesting. We got Josh Allen for the Saints. Josh Adams for the Saints. Anthony Miller was a decent player for the Bears. He played for the Texans this year. 
So, you know, Pittsburgh's now future roster. So it's interesting. They have Anthony Miller. I don't know if they're going to lose anyone. That's a pretty good receiving core, whoever the quarterback's going to be next year. Tennessee, I don't really see anything big here. Tampa Bay. And Barner was a decent, okay role player back maybe five years ago. Uh, more of a kick returner, though, punt returner. And I don't see really anything for the Bills or the Falcons. Get the second interview. You'd think that's Leftwich's job to lose at this point. Probably going to get that former quarterback. And the, the main thing you want in Jacksonville is to make Lawrence the best player he can possibly be. And you would think getting a quarterback – who paid for that team. That would be a great fit. We'll see, though. Um, still, just a lot of interviews. You don't really want to talk about many of them. Um, we're also unsure if Sean Payton is going to return. Um, we'll probably hear the next couple days, weeks, what the case is there. And uh looks like they get Kalen Saunders on the roster. The Chiefs had a Wave Josh Gordon, who hasn't really done much for them. We'll see in the 17 games, well, five games in Seattle, didn't do much. And then uh, decent stuff in New England. But Kansas City, just five catches, 32 yards, and a touchdown. Very disappointing for him. I don't know if it's him, Mahomes, or it's Josh Gordon just can't play anymore. I don't know. But they're waving him and trying to sign him back on the roster. Probably will work. I don't see people signing Josh Gordon the last couple teams in the playoffs. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, I will be back probably Friday with a review, a uh, preview of the championship games. Maybe I'll make another video earlier in the week talking about some other topics. Maybe the hiring, if a hiring happens. But right now, there's only two games. It's going to probably be a shorter video Friday. Again, thanks for watching, and uh, have a great day.